Okay, so this is the video for how to make the shape that I called the interlaced polyhedra. The first thing that you're going to need is a great stellated dodecahedron. And now, this shape that I'm about to make is no longer scalable. You can't make it bigger or smaller. So, if you're going to make, so when you make the great stellated dodecahedron, you need to make it the same size that I made it in the last video. That is, the icosahedron needs to have an edge length of 13. That's in the middle of this. So we have this now. If you don't know how to make that, you don't have one, go watch my last video. I'll show you how to do it. Um, so then the rest of what you're going to need is more stacked rings. These are rings of 32, and you're going to need 60 of them. And these are rings of 22, and you're also going to need 60 of them. The last thing you're going to need are 28 little pentagons. I have them in a tube right now, but I'll cut them up when I need them. Uh, now, you may have noticed this is not 28, this is only 23. And you may have also noticed that this thing is sitting on some um, plastic Zen magnet cards. And that's because I've already used five of these to build a support. And let's see if I can move this and show it. There is going to be, sorry about the jerky video. There's a support underneath that I attached to the point of one of the icosahedron frame. And that is going to be a tube of pentagon rings that is five long in addition to the reinforcement pentagon that you already put on the icosahedron. And what that's going to do is be a big support because we're going to be adding a lot of weight onto this thing and it will collapse if you don't have that on there. Now, the reason that this is sitting on the cards is because that support structure underneath is just ever so slightly too long for this thing to stand on a level surface well. If you use four, it still has all the weight on the points here. If you use five, it's just barely tall enough so that all the weight rests on that support tube. And you don't want either of that. You want the weight to be distributed. So I put little, I just put really thin one Zen card each under each of the points. And that evens it out, levels it out so that the weight is a little bit more distributed between the kind of the underside version of this and the tube that's extending out of here. So there's that. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is add the, what I call the extensions for the icosahedron that you're going to build. Because that's the first thing is you have to build another icosahedron around this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cut off 11 more hex tubes. I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. And then what you're going to want to do is add one each onto the corners of the great stellated dodecahedron in these pentagonal kind of concave corners, just like that. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is to take your 60 rings of 32 magnets, these right here, there's, that's 60 rings of 32, take those and flatten them out and cut them up using a card or however you like into 30 long pieces, just like we did to make the icosahedron in the first video that I'm first tutorial that I did. And you're also going to want six of the pentagons. Now, you may have noticed that I only cut off 25 of these. I still have five more, uh, but we're going to 
save those till almost the very end because we're not going to be able to use them until then. Um, but so the first thing that you're what you're going to want to do is make an icosahedron around this thing, and it's going to follow the exact same pattern as the icosahedron that you built first. But because of these spacers, the two aren't going to touch. Um, and you're going to want one of the balls, one of the magnets in this penta in the pentagon is going to fit right in between these three magnets at the end of this uh, strut. And if it doesn't fit, if it doesn't want to go, then you probably have the polarity backwards. But that is going to just... Hold on. It's going to go just like that. And then you're going to want to do the same thing with the other 25 all the way around as far as you can go. And then what you're going to want to do is add these six pentagons on in the six complete corners that you have so far to strengthen up what there is. Now that you have that, the next thing that you're going to want to get are those 60 rings of 22 magnets each. These. And just like what you did with the rings of 32, you're going to want to take them, flatten them out, and cut them up into more pieces. Except this time we're not going to make an icosahedron, we're going to make something else with them that I'll show you in just a second, but first you've got to cut them up. And again, we're going to leave five of them behind because we are going to save those for later. Now, what you're going to want to do with these is first you want to take a chain, just a chain to work with, and take one of them. And you have the top side that ends in two magnets and the bottom side that ends in one. And on the bottom side, you want to take out these four magnets in the center. So those one, those two, and those two, and you're going to end up with a piece like that. And what that is going to do is I'm going to show you this as an example. This is one of the extra edges of the icosahedron, and it's going to fit right across the middle. It's going to just kind of, let's see if I can show this, just like that. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and take those four magnets out of all of these and then I guess restart the video. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken the four magnets that I showed you off of each of these pieces and I'm going to go ahead and put them on.
Okay, and that's most of it. And now you reach kind of a interesting point. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit the video and then save it real quick. Okay, coming back. And this interesting point that I was just mentioning is now we have to flip this whole thing over so that this is on the bottom. And this is without a doubt the single most difficult part of building this entire thing. Because it's not a question of if it will damage the structure, it's a question of how much is it going to damage it and can we repair it. It may be that I will have to redo this whole thing two or three times before I get to progress past here. Um, hopefully not, but we'll see. Now you're going to want to create a kind of a dual of the structure that's down here, but you don't want it to be five pentagons long because obviously you've added more. This time you just want it to be two pentagons long. Just like that. Okay, now we're going to try and flip it. And hopefully this doesn't screw up. So, moment of truth. And there we go, all the minor structural damage has been repaired. It was successful, uh, which uh, this was trial two, actually. Uh, so it worked, hooray. Now, all we need to do is cut off four of those five pentagons that we used for this original support. Just like that. And we wanna go ahead and take these extra rings of 32 that we saved and these extra rings of 22 that we saved, go ahead and cut them up. And we're ready to complete it. So the first thing you wanna do is just go ahead and add these last uh, long pieces on to complete the icosahedron. And you want to go ahead and take your last six pentagons. Somehow I lost two of them. I only have four. There. Now I have six. You want to take your last six pentagons and put them on the corners and finish off this icosahedron. And then last of all, you want to take these last five pieces and put them into place. And that is it. That is how you make the interlaced polyhedra. This is it. We're going to smash it now.